Hello, folks. Welcome to the Greedy Podcast. I'm your host for the evening, the Greedy Broman. On this podcast, Brian sits down with Ryan Lampers, and they uh, kind of catch up, and then they talk about Ryan's Western Hunting Summit. Um, if you have not heard about the Hunting Summit, think of it as, kind of think of it as a seminar meets a retreat, meets hanging out and learning from a bunch of badasses out in the woods, how they kill big things. This year's Western Hunting Summit, um, it's almost full by the way, so go check out their website at westernhuntingsummit.com if you're interested in this. Uh, but basically, they're going to break it down to three different species. They've got elk, mule deer, and black bear. And they're doing separate seminars on each one of these. Uh, you can basically sign up, pay, go hang out with Ryan and a bunch of other killers for a couple days out in the woods. They have weekend warrior type deals for those of you who you know can't get a whole week off work. And Ryan shows you how he goes about everything from the food he eats, how he packs his bag, how he goes about glassing for mule deer and elk and things like that. And you get to learn from a lot of really amazing people who kill big stuff every year. Go ahead, guys. Check that out at westernhuntingsummit.com. Do us a favor, folks. The next time you're in Mountain Ops, punch in code GRITTY. Get yourself some free shipping. That code is going to be a rotating code. For now, it's free shipping. But who knows what it is tomorrow. So check it out. Punch in code GRITTY at checkout. If you guys are looking to get some sweet trekking poles, might I suggest going to BigSissyGear.com and checking out their Sissy Sticks. They're a carbon fiber upper with an aluminum bottom. So they're all pretty darn lightweight. And then they also have the tough and bend back ability of aluminum. And lastly, folks, go to Heather'sChoice.com. Punch in code GRITTY. And you can save 15% off on your order. And do yourself a favor. Treat yourself. Go to heatherschoice.com, punch in that code, and get yourself some amaretto pack of runes. Guys, I'm telling you, there's going to be a time before you had amaretto and a time after. That's how you're going to divide your life from here on out. You're welcome. Anyways, folks, let's get on to the show. All right, folks, welcome to the Gritty Podcast. I am your host, Brian Call, and I am joined by my buddy, Ryan Lampers, also known as Sta Healthy Hunter, Stealthy Hunter. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those who don't know, you know, Ryan and I just finished a three part mule deer series. It was uh, a hunt, uh, it's a video series that we put on YouTube. It's been doing really well. I think we're we're pushing 70,000 views. Yeah, and, uh, it's crushing, man. It's good yeah. to see. Yeah, I think all you and Brent, all your guys' hard work at the editing table there is. Uh, it's, it's definitely worked. People are people that are really liking what you guys have put together. It's been good. We're we're getting ready to publish some commentary that you and I did, where we just mm -hmm. watched each video, part one, part two, part three, and uh, right. we're in a little corner of the screen commenting on behind right. the scenes things that happen. So people who want to learn more about the gear, about the stocks, about the hunt. They can sit there about why we passed brow tine and uh, how that whole thing went down. <laughs> like all of that they can see on these commentary uh, videos that we've created. We've never done this before. I don't know if people are going to like it or not like it, but personally they're, they're a gem for me uh -huh. because you know, they're like a diary of what happened. Cause there's so mm -hmm. much more detail that you and I are able to talk through that doesn't make it into the, into the film. Right. Yeah. The initial version there that you guys put together was pretty long, which I was excited about because it was longer and not shorter. And then you, you get your scissors and you start chopping away all this really cool information and all these cool little scenes. The slow and the boring parts that have terrible audio. In <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Every, every little thing that maybe didn't flow as fast as you wanted it to got chopped. So yeah. I think that first cut, we sat down, we talked, through the entirety of it. So there's a lot more information um, well, versus what you see in the film. I, I think people are going to like it. I think there's a lot. We talk about our favorite pieces of gear, maybe that we don't mention um, from each video. I, I, I think mm -hmm. I ask you, uh, I wanted it to be educational. Like I think a lot of people are watching the series, not just to be entertained, but to learn. And there are people coming at it from various stages, people who have never hunted out West. And you can tell from mm -hmm. the comments that, they're really excited about this whole hunt, right? Yeah. They're, yeah. they're really excited about the trip, uh, about coming on one. They've never done it before. And then there's guys that have been doing it their whole lives that just really enjoyed seeing how we do it. 
but for sure. people are coming to the table from at various skill levels. And I think, um, I wanted it to be educational and this commentary kind of helps get, provide more, which brings me to our discussion today. I wanted to have you on the podcast because what we're doing, mm-hmm. you know, is more advanced when it comes to getting in the back country. And there are a lot of guys that want to try what we're doing, but are, they just don't know how, or they're mm-hmm. learning the best they can, but it's going to take a long time to sort of pick these things up. Sure. And you've basically launched a, a Western hunting summit. You did your first ones last year mm-hmm. and this year you're doing it again. This summit is, is a get together where, and you got some, some serious players coming that are going to speak at these summits. Some of the best uh, in the world. You're basically teaching guys how to, how to come out West and do some adventures, mm-hmm. not just out West, but how to go in the back country, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, a, it's, you know, it's kind of a, a theme of cutting the learning curve, if you will. It's it's a really fun experience for the guys that aren't looking to cut the learning curve. So it's it's not just for folks that have never been out west, but it's also for guys that are looking for a, a fun little vacation here in Bozeman because we do some fun things. We have some competition. We do a pretty fun thing on the mountain for for guys that sign up for that. And um, yeah, so it it, it kind of uh, focuses on anybody and everybody. But mostly what we wanted to do and why we created this was to cut the learning curve for guys that are very intimidated with coming out West on maybe their first hunt. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks seeing these films that you're putting together from the East, maybe whitetail guys that haven't been out here experiencing the Rocky mountains and, and what this country has to offer. And it's a little intimidating for people. My whole goal with putting all these speakers together was Number one, find the most consistent guys that are able to get out there on public land and and fill tags on mature animals. They've they've got secrets. They've got tips and tactics and all these little things that they do that set them apart. Uh Um, So I've tried to find the actual absolute best guys at that. Uh, There's guys in here that have a ton of knowledge. Uh, For example, last year's summit, we had Mark Livesey come in. He was a huge hit. Because this guy is so advanced in his digital scouting and his, you know, online scouting because he used to be a Missouri guy. He used to come from Missouri and have to travel out here. You know, you don't want to waste your time. You want to have a game plan. And Mark was really, really good and detailed. Um, I gave Mark the most time last year and he could have probably spent another two or three hours on e-scouting and planning your hunt. Very technical stuff. Super interesting. Everybody was glued to his speech the entire time. Plus, Mark is an excellent communicator and speaker. Yeah. Presenter. Like he's a he, fun guy to be around. Mm-hmm. He's knowledgeable on a lot of different topics. You've also got um, Remy Warren there. Right? Got Remy there. So, you know, uh, a lot of this has to do with just being able to bounce questions, whatever you have that you want to know more about. Um, it's a small group of people. Uh, you know, I don't have a ton of people I'm not allowing a ton of people to sign up. I want it to be a small group. Yeah. So there's going to be a max limit. Um, you know, 30 people is the max that we're bringing on this. We call it the adventure VIP. It, mm-hmm. it has a, a hike involved, an overnight camping trip. Um, so guys like Remy are going to be there where during the classroom portion, they can sit there and you can ask Remy whatever you want. Have a list of questions. Um, you know, we give you all these this cool little thing you can write down all your notes, whatever. And any questions or concerns or anything, you could just have a conversation with the guy if you want and try to pick up tips and things that you want to know about. But it's not just Remy. It's it's a bunch of just really, really quality guys that have had a ton of success in the mountains. Um, I feel like they're like the top, top of the 1% guys that just managed to, they have something that makes them, that allows them to get it done every year, Yeah. whether that's bow hunting or rifle hunting, um, elk hunting, mule deer hunting, you name it. Doing my research, I, I try to think about guys that are really, really good at that. I could go through the entire list of individuals that are coming, but it's a pretty long list. Well, I, I was going <laughs> to say, you know, it reminds me of, you know, seven, six, seven years ago, I was, I was playing around with making movies, you know, and, and mm-hmm. I was like, you know, I really want to film my hunts more better than I have. And so I started learning 
I bought a bunch of cameras, bought computers. I started taking online courses on how to film, make film and video and not just the technical how to, but then the creative side, how, how do you really effectively tell a story? And so I'm teaching myself all this for like a year or so. And I make a couple of movies that, that are, you know, they're just home, homegrown kind of films. And, and, and I could see, like, I was learning a lot. I taught myself a lot. But then mm -hmm. I signed up for film school with Cody Kellum from Born and Raised Outdoors. He had been, he was getting ready to put on a, a film school. So I, I go to that film school and, uh, it was not, I mean, it changed my life for sure. Uh, put probably is the reason that it put me on the path that I am now. How many days was the film school? Two days. Two days. Yeah. Two days. It was a weekend. It was a Friday through Sunday. You know, it was, it was a basically about two full days. We made commercials. We learned how to make a tell a story, make a, a short film, and then I went home and I, man, I had learned so much in just two days that I went home and put all that to work and came out with a couple of films that year that I put in the full draw film tour, and and those were well received. And I started a podcast shortly after. And but a big part of it wasn't just what I learned because that was huge because it did cut my learning curve so fast, like being hands-on with people and watching them. and But it gave me a permanent mentor that I could call. You know, I could call mm -hmm. Cody and say, hey, Cody, you know, I could always just sort of reach out. It wasn't just Cody. One of my first podcast guests was South Cox. You know, I'd watched South hunt for years for mule deer. I'd seen him when he was in Eastman's with Cameron Haynes. And I, I met Jason Phelps, who was just starting Phelps Game Calls. I met Christy Titus. You know, there was a, a host of people there that have been in the hunting industry for various periods of time that had various skill sets and the, all the boys from born and raised outdoors and all those network connections yeah. gave me opportunities as well moving forward. Uh, one of the things I had heard years ago, if you really want to become ultra successful, spend the time, spend the money to go and learn from at a seminar like travel places. I had been doing CrossFit for years and barbell shrug guys had been putting on these seminars and, and they had, you know, talked about this, this aspect of what you learn when you go and you do a two day seminar from an expert that has spent his lifetime learning things, you know, mm -hmm. and it's amazing what you learn. Uh, a couple nights ago, I saw you on Instagram and your wife asked you a question. Some guy said something like, what's your recommendation for me to, you know, go out and kill an elk or something? I don't remember what the first thing you said was. You said something. And then the second thing was get yourself a mentor. <laughs> yeah. I think the first one was uh, get yourself in shape. And the second one was <laughs> find yourself a mentor. Yeah. And, and that, that I think is, I know for me in the film, in the industry stuff, I, I was able to meet people at the film school, which really set me on a path. But then mm -hmm. later I was able to learn by everyone I interview. That's an expert. Mm -hmm. And then I was fortunate to hunt with guys like you that have vast years of experience and have stacked up success. And all of that in the last five years has shortened my learning curve to where mm -hmm. I'm not the same hunter today as I was a year ago, two years ago, three years sure. ago. And that's because I was, a, I've been able, I've been fortunate to hunt with some really, really, you know, gifted hunters. And uh, it, it, it makes a huge difference. Oh, it absolutely does. You know, there's value in going out there and, and figuring things out yourself, but it, it takes a while. So it's really hard for a lot of people to have the time. Uh -huh. uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of younger guys, they're just getting into their careers. Maybe they're newly married. They don't have the time to spend that some of us are fortunate to have out there and just put gobs of mountain time, you know, in. And I remember, uh, sitting there going, man, um, this film school is a thousand dollars to <laughs> yeah. go Friday night, Saturday day right. and Sunday morning. Right. You know, you're done by Sunday afternoon. It's like two days. Yeah. It's a thousand dollars. And I, and I, I remember thinking, should I spend this money? You know, this is crazy. And then sure. I was thinking back to, well, you know what, you know, it's hard to put a price on education. Like I've never really regretted spending money on learning and, mm -hmm. I put the money in and I didn't know any of those people were going to be at the film school, by the way. And mm -hmm. until I got there 
And, what a crazy uh, group of individuals to all meet up and look where everybody uh, is now, right? It's crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. It was so cool to be part of it. It was magical, man. And yeah. I feel like that experience, uh, again, was worth every penny. Uh, it's mm -hmm. the best thousand bucks I spent, you know. And, right. and not only did it give me um, th some knowledge and connections and networking, but it also gave me confidence because mm -hmm. once once I made a movie like by myself on a two day weekend, uh, pulling all nighters, I, I I walked away from that going, you know, I won a Hoyt bow by the way, mm -hmm. which there was like four teams or five teams, and whoever made the best short film would win a bow right. uh, and uh and they nominated me uh, they they gave me the bow i was like S sweet you know that gave me a lot of confidence right to yeah. to go forward and keep honing this you know whatever skill i had i was starting out with and like i said best thousand bucks i've spent oh, sure. you know right up there right up there yeah <laughs> well and that's it you know um i think uh for like the summit it's we want to give people the confidence and that's why we have two days of mountain time uh where we're bringing the whole group into the mountains we're going to go up there and there's going to be you know myself cody rich is going to be there brian barney's going to be there depending on which summit it is we're going to have uh you know douglas bose is going to be there on the bear summit um and we're just we're just going to have mountain time talking about what we're seeing what we're looking for why we set up here, why we glass here, why we travel here, what's our approach going to be. So it's more of a, um, education, an important education versus just in the classroom. There's definitely, um, a lot to be learned in the classroom, but I think that mountain time is huge and it's fun because we're up there, um, to tell you a little bit about last year's summit. I told everybody to be in really good shape, you know, because there's going to be a big hike involved. Mm -hmm. uh, it ended up being not the longest hike. It was five miles. It had some really good, you know, vertical to get up there. Um, pretty good elevation. Not everybody's at the same level. So when you yeah. take a group of people, there's always a, a lead group. Mm -hmm. Those guys went with Brian Barney. Those guys want to stomp up the mountain as fast as they can. There's a middle and then there's kind of a back group. Um, so everybody was comfortable with five miles. So we did five miles and those that wanted to go further, they went up another 1800 feet on the mountain and, you know, saw the goats and all that type thing. And, you know, we're taking these guys into areas where they're going to see animals. Um, we saw a half a dozen grizz bears last year. We saw, I don't know, eight, 10, 12 different black bears, a lot of elk, deer, goats. And we want to put them in areas like that where we can go up there and then we can actually talk about stocking or approaches or answer anybody's questions about glassing or areas that we would look for. I think there's value in doing that. And that mm -hmm. gives people a little more confidence to go out there and actually know what to look for Yeah, because they've seen it. But yeah, I, I think, I think there's that. And I think there's also, you know, the classroom setting, there's getting, you know, a half a dozen different presenters that have a ton of experience. And, um, Brian Barney is one of the guys that I love that guy. He is a great speaker. He's very knowledgeable. He's uber successful. Um, Travis Nowotny is another one. I've got some killers. Like we talked about Remy's coming. Um, Randy Newberg's coming for the elk summit. We've just got a whole host of people who have had success and they have a lot to add. Um, and I think it's pretty valuable uh, yeah, for myself. Yeah. Mentorship was huge in my life. I know, I don't, I don't know what kind of success I'd have right now if I wouldn't have my dad to lean on in the Me early too. years yeah. for, for deer hunting. He was good at that. He's good at bird hunting. I learned a lot, but he lacked in, in elk, which I was very fortunate to pick up a mentor of North Idaho who brought me into his house for three weeks. And he taught me the world when it comes to elk hunting. The value that I had in, in basically not working and spending time with, with that guy, Dallas, was huge because I feel like that is what shaped me to be the hunter I am today when it comes to elk hunting. He taught me tactics that I hadn't heard before strategies um and it was about going out on the mountain and him saying how would you approach this how would you deal with that bull that's screaming down in that hole you know i give him an answer and it's probably wrong and he'd say <laughs> well maybe you should try this but i think there's a ton of value in mentorship and um obviously this is a way for us to mentor people mm -hmm. people people that have questions 
I get a billion questions. I don't want to sound arrogant or anything. There's people that get more questions than I do on social media, but I get so many questions of very elementary type questions. And, um, I only have so many hours of the day <laughs> with the family. Uh, you know, my wife, my kids, um, work and all everything else. I could answer elementary type questions all day long, but I wanted something like this to where we can go elementary all the way to advanced with any questions you have. If there's a specific person that, um, you know, has this niche that you want to follow, um, whether that's archery guys or rifle guys or early season, late season, uh, different states. So, I have a whole host of people coming from all over the place, mm -hmm. um, whether they're Idaho boys or Montana boys or Washington or you name it. Um, everybody that's going to be at the summit presenting has something very valuable to add. And, and anybody who has a question about that can have it answered, you know, whether in the classroom or on the hike, talking them to them in a just a conversation around the fire at the end of the day or whatever. So. I, I imagine too, you know, a lot of guys have trouble finding somebody who wants to go do something crazy like this. Mm -hmm. And this way you can network work with 30, 40, whatever guys that also mm -hmm. want to go do crazy stuff. That's the cool thing. Perhaps too. get yourself a few hunting partners. Yes. These guys. Did that happen last year? If they're signing up for this. Oh yeah. So like, for example, one of the guys from last year, Brock, just a stud, he came to work hard and he crushed the hike. Uh, each summit has a workout, whether it's uh, Dan Staten's coming to give a, a workout, you know, a mm -hmm. couple hour workout for the Elk Summit. Um, Mountain Tough is going to be there for the Mule Deer Summit. They're going to give a workout. They threw a pretty intense workout at us last year. And uh, Brock is one of those guys that crushed it. Um, super good individual. Him and I are going to do a hunt this next year in Wyoming for elk. But a lot of these people stay in contact now and I stay in contact with them. You know, everybody's mm -hmm. got my number now and mm -hmm. um, I don't know about any of the other presenters if they want to give their number out. <laughs> but we have a relationship with these guys that, who have attended. And so it, I like to answer all their questions even beyond the summit yeah. and take the time and either have a conversation with them after the fact. There's quite a few people this year, it's funny, uh, attendees that were at the summit. I was getting messages while they're hunting, like on the mountain, like, hey, w what should I do here? I got this buck sitting across the canyon, blah, blah, blah. And uh, man, I'm I'm all about helping any way I can. So it's yeah. cool because I can, I can message with these guys. Yeah. So yeah, now we have this relationship and I want that with anybody who attends a summit. And I think all the presenters do. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of camaraderie and... and uh, What's it's cool. What's cool about this is it does give people an opportunity to uh, to to sh shorten the learning curve and learn, network, meet new people, and all that. But every time someone attends this, they're going to walk away, you know, enriched, and mm -hmm. they're going to then go out and share that with family and friends. They'll become mm -hmm. mentors for people that are in their circle of influence, and then those people become mentors it's it's a it's a really neat thing to be part of just even with mm -hmm. our films and and uh our respective podcasts we're, we're able to to share things that people take and then they share and so on and right. it, it is a it's a cool thing to be part of because i think it does it spreads mm -hmm. i guess the value of the lifestyle that we're trying to promote uh right. conservation it it promotes hunting in a positive light that that really does help ensure that the wild places we cherish stay intact, mm -hmm. you know, for sure. You know, we get a lot of heat because people say, quit sharing, you know, your hunts and, you know, you're <laughs> going to make more people want to hunt and you're going to tell people to come out West, quit telling them to come out West. And it's like, man, one thing I've learned over the last few years and a couple, and especially with you is there's so much untouched country out there. Mm -hmm. Go find it. There is. There's there is, plenty uh, of public land and plenty of hunts and opportunities for everyone. We can right. invite people to come out West and hunt and <laughs> we're all going to be okay. Yeah. And the more well, people it, that do it, the more they're yeah. going to, they're going to value, you know, what we value. Absolutely. And look, I mean, I'll be honest. I get, we get, like you said, we get a lot of that. People are like, they're selfish. I was selfish for probably 30 years. Um, but I'm old now, Brian, you're <laughs> almost old. You're getting there. And, uh, and look, I think you hit a point where 
I guess it's cliche to say you want to give back, but you want to see other people succeed and and get to be privy to the things that you're privy to and I've been privy to. So um, I think without kind of rising the tide and getting other people to realize this lifestyle and see what they're missing, we're all going to lose in the end if we don't if we don't get these people excited about what excites us, which is being outdoors, hunting, showing them the value, showing them how to do it, um, showing them a little bit of a learning curve, trying to get them, you know, to the end goal a little bit quicker. I think that just helps all of it. It helps us with the politics of it. It just helps us with the conservation, the support, Uh, you know, growing this community is not a bad thing. Now, if I was 25, I would say, I don't want anybody else to hunt. I want it all to myself. Um, I don't want anybody else on this mountain. That's just not a reality. It's selfish. Um, I realize that now. Now I've hit a point where I, I love answering these questions as much as it takes the time to do it. I want to see people succeed now and I want to see them get to enjoy what you and I have been doing forever. And, uh, and I think there's a lot of value in that. And, you know, I think there's always going to be people who poo poo giving out knowledge and giving people maybe cutting the learning curve isn't what they want to see. They wanted people to take the road they took, which was just learning on their own. But in today's world, it's just not how it works. If we want to get these young guys excited about it, you want them to see it, see some success in the beginning. Maybe it's not the first year or two, but we got to get them the tools and the knowledge and the experience yeah. um, and the inspiration to go do these things. You, you don't see the, 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 the wisdom or the, the brilliance in sitting in a tree stand and shooting monster blacktail. And, mm-hmm. and uh, part of that is because you've never done it, but uh, <laughs> let me just say this real quick. Well, look, uh, wait, before you go on, <laughs> let's just talk about th- we've had this conversation before. There's no adventure in that, Brian. There's okay. no adventure. There's entertainment. How condescending of you. How, <laughs> how? There's entertainment and education, but zero. What's wrong with ed- entertainment? <laughs> it's fun. It's okay. <laughs> Some of us don't need to be entertained all day. We what, want the adventure. What I was going to say being is on foot, the first on the tree stand hunt I ever did, Anthony Spencer said, come up, come with me to Mount Hood. We're going to go in Oregon. We're going to go up in these, in this uh, like migration corridor for mule deer coming off or blacktail rather coming off the mountain. And we're going to, we're going to get them. And so we hike in, it's like a couple feet of snow. We get in there and I hang a tree stand. The snow is coming down. I've never done this before. I come up in a tree and I had the most spectacular day of mm. buck rotting does that I've ever seen in my life. It was yeah. like when you're in that perfect storm of elk that just, you're just in the middle and it's just crazy. It's frenzy. Yeah. These bucks, these big bucks had come out of the woodwork. There's one doe, one, and it's like five, six bucks and they're just chasing her everywhere. They're fighting and they were there for like four hours running underneath me and around me. Anthony at the time, he thought he'd do the trad life. So he was flinging arrows and missing, you know, <laughs> uh, he was very successful with his, with his uh, trad bow for years but not that day, but I was able to have immediate like success sitting in a tree stand. Mm-hmm. I was so skeptical and didn't want to go and wasn't really that interested that day. I went out just, you know, with, with a friend sat there and had just an incredible time. And from that day on, I was hooked on that yeah. style of hunting and trying it and doing it more and honing it. If I had gone in there and sat and seen nothing, which is like my typical experience, Mm. I don't know that I would have ever. uh, Wouldn't have set the hooks, probably. I wouldn't have set the hooks. I don't know that I would have even continued necessarily bow hunting, except for elk. You know, I I I I don't know. There's something about going out and experiencing nature and Mm -hmm. actually seeing something and and being that close that hooks you. So having success, I I don't think it has anything to do with it being modern days or not in today's world or not. I do think kids have a shorter attention span maybe, but still, I just think it's human nature. We often don't appreciate the the times where you're just out there and you see nothing. For sure. Until you've seen things. And for example, um, just look at this last hunt we did, Uh, you know, we had... Mike with us on this, Mike Munsell, mm-hmm. uh, he'd never experienced anything like that. 
Yeah. And he'd never been on the mountain. He'd never been hunting before. And so when I invited him, I was excited to see his perspective on what we do. Um, you know, seeing it from social is one thing, but actually coming with us like he did and going on the mountain and actually seeing it, the guy came back and he was changed. Like he was, he was completely convinced. Like he's been, he's at a part of his life. There's, there's some, there was been something missing in his life and he found it in what we were doing. Um, whether it was the quietness of it, seeing these animals and the behaviors they were doing, um, the mountain time, his sleep was different. He picked up all these little things that I didn't even notice because yeah. I do it all the time, but he was new to it. I mean, the guy was completely changed and now he wants to do it. Maybe it was good. There's a little mix up on the tag thing. And <laughs> maybe it was good that brow time didn't get killed this year. Um, that buck by Mike, because, you know, maybe it would have been too easy and, and him coming up there and seeing what we do. And, and really he did gain a lot of respect on just the miles we covered, the elevation we covered, the long days of glassing and just the hardness of a hunt. I think next year when he actually has a tag in his pocket, he's not going to just go out there and expect to get one. He knows it's going to be work, but he sees that we could have made it successful. He, there's definitely opportunities, but that was fun. I enjoyed the heck out of having Mike there who's never been hunting before. Yeah. And you know, you and I, you, you guys shared the same pen a lot. He had a lot of questions for you. I heard you guys talking over there a lot. <laughs> um, I'm assuming those were questions from oh, yeah. Mike, That's... but, um, it was pretty cool to yeah, hear that. It was really interesting to have someone there that is an expert on fitness, health, wellness, yeah. like just just a, a a huge body of knowledge, a wealth of knowledge there. Um, so he could keep up. He was fit. He did everything with us. He's tough minded, uh, all of that. But then, but then he was like asking so many questions about game meat and mm -hmm. animals and nature and you know. And he'd backpacked, but there's a different thing between sure. going out and backpacking and going out and being a predator. They're yeah. not the same. No. Just observing sure. nature and being a predator are different. Yeah, you have a purpose in the morning when you wake up when you're a predator. And that's to go find an animal, whatever it takes, however far it takes. It is way different. And and yeah, he had done some backpacking, but um completely different mindset from just going out and hitting a trail at a trailhead where there's another hundred cars parked there and going and hiking the same trail versus doing what we did, getting off, uh, off any trail off grid and actually just observing wildlife without anybody around. Yeah. Um, completely different. And he learned a lot, even though he didn't have a tag in his pocket. But, um, I think, I think the hooks were set for Mike and, um, you know, he's, he definitely sees some value there. So he's going to be uh, pursuing that in the future. And that's, that's why I think it's so important because, you know, changing minds is very important. Like I mentioned yeah. the politics and today we got to get these people on board just to know what it is that we're doing. And we're not just out there, you know, doing what Hollywood wants everybody else well, to think we're doing. P the fact is we don't value what we don't know. People don't value public lands. Yeah. If they don't use them, not the same yeah. way. They're like, well, we'll, we'll, we'll keep Yellowstone, but let's sell the rest. You know, it's, mm, it's sure. You know, they have in their minds, these ideas of what public land is and mm -hmm. they don't, they don't value it because they don't use it. They don't get it. And, and right. I think that's a huge thing. I, I, I mention this all the time, you know, about 25% of the United States is public land. The other 75% is all private. 25% isn't that much. Mm -hmm. And and when you look at species that need contiguous portions, huge contiguous portions of of untouched, unhabitat, uninhabited land, like your grizzly bears and your wolves, those things they die when civilization encroaches. They die. Mm -hmm. They they can't make it. There's tons of s smaller birds, and there's all sorts of animals that die. You have animals that thrive mm -hmm. when civilization encroaches, like like coyotes whitetail your favorite white species yeah. uh <laughs> mule deer not so much they yeah. disappear when civilization encroaches on their habitat there's certain animals that just you gotta leave nature alone and 25 yeah. percent just isn't that much you know can mm -hmm. we not like just keep 75 for all of us humans that's the private 25 mm -hmm. is is all the public well a lot of people if you haven't spent time on it you don't understand it 
you're not mm-hmm. aware of grizzly you're not you don't understand how nature really works this whole equilibrium idea you know just leave nature alone it'll just be awesome if humans sure. don't get involved it's like no we're too involved <laughs> already like everything those things people don't get unless they come out and sort of experience it and with the food movement and and people wanting to connect with the outdoors it's in our dna also being mm-hmm. a predator is in our dna and there is something that comes alive when you go out and you actually take responsibility in harvesting your own meat and and actually going through the process of taking accountability for the life that you take so that you can live it's transformative and it does give you a whole new appreciation for existence and life and what you're what you're doing here you know on this mm-hmm. planet while you're here and right. I think you got to win as many hunter, uh, as many potential new hunters as you can. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, what they don't know, like I, I completely understand why people don't like hunting. It You're inundated with it um, through movies, through cartoons, through Hollywood. It's easy to become anti, but what they see isn't the reality of what we're actually doing. And that's why it's important that we actually show people who are maybe only born, raised, don't have a father to take them out. Um, they've never had opportunities to go out in the mountains and actually see it for themselves and develop an appreciation for it. And you haven't been up there. You don't know what you're missing. You don't have that appreciation. So the value really isn't there to you. If you just see hunting on how it's portrayed through the news or the media, man, you're, you're going to come away with a bad taste of it. And it's easy to see why and understand why they don't yeah. like it. Yeah, there's there's selfishness in wanting it all to ourselves. I get that. I don't want to see anybody on the mountain, but there's a bigger picture here, and we got to be a little bit bigger than that and show people what it's all about. Yeah, hey, I've got another question for you before before we kind of tie up this show. Yeah, and, and that is this: you know, we're walking through the woods and we're we're walking the trail out. You know, we got some antlers on our packs, and somebody stops and says, "Congratulations, that's a sick looking buck. Where'd you shoot it?" Mm-hmm. What is your feelings on <laughs> that question? Where did where you did, shoot it? Did yeah. they say where? Yep. Oh, uh, well, I never say where. I know. Uh, I, is, is it a hunter? Uh, yeah, probably it's a hunter. Yes. They're like okay. killer buck, man. Where'd you shoot it? What's your? Right. <laughs> you're you're calling me out, man. All right, so I am a liar, Brian. Just so you know. Um, I will lie, 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 lie when it comes to anybody (laughs) asking where. (laughs) Um, Expect, just so everybody knows, expect a lie if I actually start telling you where that is, because it's not going to be true. (laughs) Um, I will divert and and exaggerate where all day long. It's easy. Um, But other than that, I'm completely truthful in every other aspect. That's funny. Like that is the, for those who aren't familiar with hunting, that is the, um, the written rule is Mm -hmm. like, we had that, I had that podcast I did with Jeff, uh, from, uh, you know, on the mule deer that I just put out a few weeks back and Mm -hmm. we both, we both talked about this, you know, he's sitting there with a spotting scope on a big buck with his phone scope on it, filming it. My buddy Brett drives up. And he's like, hey, how you guys doing? You know, you seen anything? Nope, nothing. It's dead. You should go home. There's no deer here. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Brett looks across the canyon. There's a giant buck bedded in the snow. He's like, oh, uh, there's a buck right there. And they're like, yeah, we've been filming him for 10 minutes. <laughs> you know, but they already lied to him earlier. Oh, sure. Oh, but we're all a bunch of liars when it comes to that. Brett sure. didn't bat an eye. He's like, of course you lied to me. <laughs> of course. I'd lie to you, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yep. Um, no, it's, it's completely true. And, and every time, like with the questions, I always get the where, even if it's just what state, I don't, I don't want to answer that. I think there's, that's the wrong question to ask. It should never be about where it should be. How it's just, nobody wants to divulge where I love seeing people go find their own spots, their own where. And, uh, I don't ever want to tell anybody cause it's a lot of time and effort and, um, you know, planning and research that you found your spot. Well, the thing is that I, what I've noticed is um, I've hunted with a lot of people over the last five years, and I've been fortunate, mm-hmm. given what I do, to be able mm-hmm. to go and hunt a lot of places and a lot of very different animals. Like from, sure. it's not just elk and mule deer; it's it's species across the board. What I found is 
there's animals everywhere. Everywhere. They're in every yeah. state. Yeah, you give that, me an elk tag in any state, right. and I will find the elk. It's right. there, and they're I'm not sure. A, there's good spots in Idaho, in Washington, in Oregon, in Montana, in Utah. There's there's great elk areas. There's great deer areas in every state. Bear areas, you name it. It bugs me when it all comes down to the where were you? Yeah. Why wouldn't you even tell me the unit? Well, because it shouldn't be important. Um, well, and, and a couple of years ago, get offended when you don't tell them <laughs> first the state. Okay, all right, it was Montana. Fine. Uh, well, what unit was it? Well, now we're going a little too far because I don't <laughs> want to even say the unit. Yeah. It's like it shouldn't matter. There, there's no value in that to you. you well, what, be asked question. what I have noticed is uh, what you know when naturally as I produce content and I put a film out or a video or it's actually surprising to mm -hmm. a degree at how few people ask the question. I would mm -hmm. say nine out of 10 do not ask what state, where were you, any of that, because sure. there's a hunting etiquette that you just, mm -hmm. you don't ask some of those. Now what state is pretty broad and sure. I may have, I, I, I would ask that in the past, but beyond that, you've gone way too far. Sure. You know, I, I'll never ask that. <laughs> and, and now it's, it's, I won't even divulge the state anymore. Well, here's the thing. I think what's important for people to know is there's, like you mentioned, there's places everywhere in each individual state in each unit, there's golden little spots everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, I think what we're trying to do, what I want to keep doing is looking at new areas. I don't want to keep hunting the same spots every year. And I think it's a hundred percent within, um, I have no doubt this next season, if you and I go out and hit six new areas, mm -hmm. we're going to find success in most of those areas because we're going to do our homework. It's not going to be the same spot going back to every year because yeah. we don't do that. I don't do that. We all hunt. Some of us hunt or afforded to hunt different states. Now you're going, you're doing the research you're finding spots on the go kind of by braille. That's what's fun about it. And we're still able to find big animals or old age class animals in every state or yeah. every area that we're going to. It's not like um, you don't go and just hit a rotten egg. You're like, this whole week sucked because this is a lousy sure. spot. That does happen. That's the, for me, that's usually the, uh, not the norm. Usually yeah, uh, cool. uh, in every state I'll, I'll get into and find, and that's why I was saying, I, I'm surprised how many like everywhere is good. So it's not like there's this magic spot that you go to and no. everything is great. It's really how you're hunting, not where you're hunting. Yeah. It, it kind of saddens me to see everybody looking for where you were. I mean, they're looking at photos and they're looking at it. And then when, if they figure it out, they're like, ha ha, you know, now hunting for me is going to be great forever. It's just not the case. Well, and I've it's learned that where, where a guy will go back to the same exact spot that I did. Mm -hmm. It, it was a nightmare getting there because mm -hmm. it was really tough. Got He got back in there. Then he hunted it for five, six days, didn't see anything, and then hiked out. Mm -hmm. I can go into the same spot and kill every time. And, mm -hmm. and and so there's a, again, it's really how you're doing it, not where you're doing it. And people who are really good. focused on the where often don't, haven't developed the, the skills to do the how. And, mm -hmm. and the, they're spending too much time trying to figure out where to go rather than how to hunt. I know. And that, and that's why like bringing it back to this summit is, um, you know, that's why I have Mark there. He's really good at showing people how to develop a game plan, um, or a hunt plan. And all of us that have been doing this long enough, we have a hunt plan going yeah. into the season, going into this state, going into this hunt. We don't have just one spot we're going to, we have a bunch of little X's that we've researched. Um, that's important. So being physically fit to be able to say, all right, this spot, maybe there's somebody here this time. You know, you don't want to be in the point at the point where you're like, well, dang, now my entire two week vacation is wrecked. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you want to go to the next number two spot. And if that spot has folks or it's just void of game, you go to your number three spot. Well, and, and Ryan, you just so, mm -hmm. so years ago, I listened to Randy Newberg on, on the hunt talk radio podcast is probably three years ago. And he said, something to the effect of the biggest deterrent for p new hunters. They did this poll, this studied it. The biggest mm -hmm. thing that stops hunters from, from going out and hunting new hunters from doing it is they don't know where to go, but yeah, they don't absolutely. have a place to go. Right. Right. 
access. Yeah. And what's funny is not knowing where to go is crazy because especially like we didn't know where to go in New Zealand. We mm-hmm. virtually landed and just was like, here's a There's spot on a map. Go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and then our second leg of the trip, it was the same thing. It was like, where do we go? And right. thankfully we had Remy Warren who we called on the phone. Yeah. But he gave us like 12 spots. He did. He was just like, well, here's a piece of public. Here's a piece of public that has these kind of animals. Yeah. If you're looking for a bow hunting friendly, you know, maybe here. And, and so he had half of his stuff <laughs> is just on the DOC website. It was, it was. So <laughs> yeah, there, there's all this information as to the, where you can go, where the public land is. And we went park. to one of his lowest rank, least liked spots. It was the closest one to us. <laughs> <laughs> and we <laughs> killed some monster bulls. So yeah. I would say that um, just to say, like, if you're back east and you're coming west, mm-hmm. there really is piles of public land that you just mm-hmm. embark on. For sure. And with some e-scouting and some knowledge ahead of time and understanding elk behavior, you know, um, you know, some hands-on stuff like what the summit teaches uh, mm-hmm. is is going to really help with that. But Gosh, yeah. dang, there's so much opportunity out there. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh, it's unbelievable. I mean, what the summit provides is information, tips, tactics, different techniques, whether you're, we're calling for elk, we're going to teach that shooting your bow. We're going to, you know, show you how, how to dial that in. If you want to know about tuning, you can, we can show you how to do that. Um, to rifle shooting, uh, everything is going to be covered. The where is going to be on you. Um, but you know, we're going to show you how to find it, um, in e-scouting or, you know, even paper maps, you know, where are you going to look at to uh, focus in on areas that are probably going to be pretty good for animals. There's that, yeah. but there's never going to be an X that we give you for uh, sure. I remember, uh, Ranella doing a podcast on hunting etiquette and this very thing, like someone takes you to a hunting spot. He's like, I don't like it when someone takes me to their hunting spot because then I can't ever go back there. Yeah. On my own, unless I go with that person. It's like the rule. And so he's like, I'd rather discover that hunting spot on my own. So then I have the right to it to go whenever I want. Bingo. (laughs) And that's, that's how I am nowadays. They're like, let's go here. I've been here lots of times or let's go here. I've been here. No, let's all, let's both go to a whole new spot. You're basically checking places off the map that you never (laughs) get allowed to go to again. So just go figure it out on your own. (laughs) Right. (laughs) (laughs) One thing I would like to add to that though, is if you are a guy who has been taken to a spot and you have had this agreement, like I will never go back to your spot, but you do go back. You're a world-class dirtbag. It's, it's, (laughs) <laughs> it's the lowest of it lows. Is, it is unacceptable. Yes. Yeah. It happens though. It's funny how um that is the one of the uh, darkest things you can do to <laughs> your hunting buddy is, is to be taken to his spot and then go broke back any later. Any trust that you had, your honesty is out the window. <laughs> for sure. You can <laughs> cheat on with his wife and that's <laughs> that's less don't ever go back without permission. That's how it goes. <laughs> uh, that's For funny. Sure. It's true. So. It's very true. Um, you know, I, I feel bad when I, so you and I will get comments, my YouTube, your channels, where people will ask us where we hunted, or they'll go and just say, oh, you guys were hunting right here on this spot in sure. this state. We delete those comments. I yep. delete those comments because our audience is growing. My audience has grown quite a bit. And when I, I've been on hunts where I've told people the unit I'm in in the past or what state I'm in and people know what unit. And I have really, really made some fellow hunters really upset with me over the years because I'm blowing up spots. They earned over a long period of time and sending hundreds of people there. Right. And there creates some bitterness and I put myself in their shoes and I, I would be really, really upset if you know randy newberg waltzes in films a hunt and says yep i hunted this over the counter spot and uh it was great and i shot this big bull and look at all these elk i saw and they're all on camera Mm -hmm. it's like the people who've been hunting there forever they're screwed that unit will now just be hammered with guys Mm -hmm. that are going to go out to the where and just just Mm -hmm. hit that spot 
And so yeah. just out of respect for people that have been hunting these areas that, that we're going into, especially because these are not, I don't care if I tell you about a unit that took me 10 or 15 years to draw or 20 mm -hmm. years to draw. I'll tell you all day long. I went and hunted unit X, Y, Z in Arizona. I don't, mm -hmm. because you got to go through the whole process. It's limited entry anyway. Yeah. For there'll sure. be more competition maybe to draw that tag, but it's a totally different ball game when you're talking about over the counter. Sure. When you're talking about over the counter or easy draw hunts, if you blow those up, you ruin it for people who have been, who earned them. Yeah. Yeah. You just got to think about it that way. You know, there may be a spot in an area somewhere where there's been a family hunting it for 20 years, you know, generations. And, um, the last thing you want to do is go in there and have a successful trip. And then just knowing that you're not going to be going back yourself, expose that to everybody else. That's just not right. So that's, that's going to hurt that that group that's been hunting it forever. And I know I'm learning as, as this whole thing goes, um, I gotta be much more careful about doing that because I see that can be very harmful to people and I want to be very tight lipped. Dude, um, when I roll into a trailhead a or into process, a, sure. an area and we run into somebody and I'm sitting there and they go, Oh, great. Oh, great. Brian calls here. Oh, you're going to film it. <laughs> everybody's going to know everybody's going to ruin my hunting spot. Like they, there's those that are like anxious or eager to meet me. They're like, Hey, that's cool. I got to meet you. And, and they mm -hmm. visit, you know, and, and they appreciate what I've done. And then there's people that are like really, really like upset because they're scared. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to ruin their place. Right. And, um, and uh, after having, now I assure guys, like I meet in the woods and they're like, Oh no. I'm like, look, this is on the down low. I'm not, right. I'm not telling people what state, you know, yeah. what area. I'm trying to keep all those things. And and the reality is for elk, deer, everything. I've really not hunted the same place twice in five years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what's cool about it. You know, there's just so much opportunity out there. But um, no, I think you're right. I think having that conversation with them, resting, you know, I guess rest assured, I'm not going to blow this spot up for you. Gives them a little peace of mind because um, we've definitely had that uh, a few times well, even just this year. So we did get a lot of DMs and and messages and even comments from people saying thank you for not uh, disclosing mm -hmm. or like you know mentioning the state or the locations mm -hmm. that you're hunting on all our series this year. Even yeah. in New Zealand, some of it's pretty uh, recognizable, uh, sure. and some of that's hard to avoid. But in general, yeah. man, you know, like I said, it just gives respect to the people that mm -hmm. are, that are put in, yeah. put, put in, in the time there. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I know. And like I said, I'm going to be much more careful um, than I, you know, just a few years ago, you know, I made some mistakes and talked about not specific spots or anything, but general areas. And then I could see, you know, people getting upset, but, you know, people, people knowing who you are kind of sucks. Um, because <laughs> it's like, you get, you get, you just get that. And, uh, it's Oh dude, you're the, but. you're hilarious. Cause I'm just like, uh, whatever you, you got your face mask up to your eyes. You got your hood on, you got a hat. You're, you're like walking through the woods, hiding yourself as we approach trailheads. It's funny. <laughs> you want to be like, you don't the want mop. I got on my head, Brian. It's very telling. <laughs> I don't really want people to that know you look homeless. That's one of the two. That's what I was hoping it was going to do. But now it's like, I don't know. People recognize it. People the, recognize the it. Well, it, it is the case when you go out into an area where it's like walking into Cabela's, I might get recognized. And if I walk mm -hmm. into, I don't know, JC Penney's, you know, nobody, nobody cares, you know, <laughs> for sure. So, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Those circles make a difference. Well, yeah. cool, man. Um, the Western Hunting Summit, what's the website for that? WesternHuntingSummit.com. So, All one word? Um, yep. WesternHuntingSummit.com. And then uh, we've pretty much sold out on elk. That went real fast in the pre-launch. There's a few mm -hmm. spots left open for mule deer and a few spots left for bear. But yeah, we it's surprising. Got a lot of the people that um, came to the last year's summit or signed on again this year, which is really cool totally to see. Makes sense. Um, you know, they, again, they, some of the stuff that they learned last year may be reiterated this year, but it's not just what you learned. It's, it's an experience. It's just fun. 
we're trying to make this fun with we're 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 providing people all these healthy meals on the hike mm. back at the big sky archery where we do the classroom stuff we've got dave brinker coming in he's doing some music we're grilling over a birch barrel we're having you know archery competitions and trying to win stuff um if you can beat brian barney or you're a good shot and you're going to win something good. But um, we're just trying to make it fun and experience, not just about learning, but, you know, a good reason to come to Montana and spend four days of your summer and, and have a blast. So it's a big part of it. You mentioned mm-hmm. to me when we were on the mountain that you might do squeeze in another, yeah. another summit if you, if you sold out early. Yeah. That's the case. So um, elk sold out early and the VIP portion of it. So there's a waiting list. And if we get enough folks on that, yeah, we're, we're going to throw another one for everybody. And um, we'll have another date in, uh, in the middle of the summer. There. So is there a waiting list through the website? Like if it's yes. full, you can sign up. And so if you hit a quota right there, that makes it makes sense. You, yep. You'll launch, you'll set up another one for sure. Yeah. Good. We got a spot there. You can put your name on it. If we get, enough interest i would love to throw another one have another little adventure there um on the mountains so i think one of the things that's cool is the bear summit we're going to be spending time in bear country the elk summit obviously more focused towards elk and the mule deer summit we're going to be in areas where there's better glassing for mule deer and and, uh talking about that specifically so uh, i'd be more than happy to throw another one on and it'd be pretty cool to get another group uh of elk guys all lined up so Nice. I'm uh, excited for, for people that are going. And uh, what, what's the cost? You know, there's a lot of people that are going to mm-hmm. be, that might be surprised by the cost, for up sure. or down. Like, what's the cost? Yeah. So there's kind of two tiers. There's uh, one of the things we, the Adventure VIP is the full four day treatment that starts off with the hike, an overnighter, um, meals, music, everything, mm-hmm. competitions. And the weekend, um, where we have guys for two days at Big Sky Archery, we're doing some workouts, but we're really educating. That price is just over a grand, so it's a thousand forty-seven, similar to your your yeah, my cost, film school, your film school. Um, and then there's what we call the weekend warrior. Those are for guys that maybe can't do the hike; they don't have the time to take all four days. It's Saturday and Sunday, and that's six forty-seven. And again, what you what comes with that is the education part. Hill and I, our job is to feed you good as well. Big part of this is talking about the foods we eat, yeah. um, lifestyle, healthy living, some of the foods that you should have in your backpack, and we go over all that, and, and we're going to talk about that in depth. But uh, we're also going to be feeding you that to see if you actually like it uh, and if it's important to you. But um, So everything's covered, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a price. I know that can scare a lot of folks. I think there's value in it. Um, with what you're going to learn and the whole experience of the ordeal. So, yeah, it's funny. Like people are willing to spend money to, to learn like I did for film school. I've right. paid for a lot of, uh, seminars since that time. And before, especially before, you know, when mm-hmm. I was in my earlier career, you know, we had a budget that we'd spend on going to seminars and learning things just as part of staying current and connected. Sure. Um, and being part of different clubs, you know, for, Mm -hmm. and, uh, I recognize the value of education way, way back. And, uh, this is just a unique thing where, Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see a lot of this kind of thing going on in, in the hunting community yet. Uh, And you know, what's interesting, um, you know, I was always a huge fan of train to hunt and the community that surrounded train to hunt. When I first got into it, I was just blown away by, the good natured people that were involved in it. And that becomes your family. Really. I got so many connections with people that I met at train to hunt or came to our event or that's where I met you. At that's yeah, how I met where, you. And I have so many good experiences with that. And that's really what I want with the summit. I want to keep in contact with these people. We got a, a you know, a close Facebook group with anybody involved and um, just being able to bounce questions off. People have my number. We just keep in close contact, and and it's yeah. really cool to have that tight knit group of people and that little community to kind of keep in touch with. And you know, any concerns or anything um, people want to know about, it's right there and and uh, easy access to these so called experts. Um, and we do have some experts coming to these things. Uh, yeah. It's really cool to see who stepped up and 
uh, is going to be presenting at this year's. So cool. And then the dates. So the Bear Summit, which is numero uno, that's going to be May, gosh, I think it's 28th through 31st. It's four days. Uh, the Bear Summit is a little different. It's actually three days on the mountain. Um, I feel like I wanted that extra day up there. Uh, we're going to be looking for bears. We're going to be traveling country a lot to find those bears and uh, really dialing in where typically we find them. I love bear hunting, dude. There's going to be some I love it. Pretty cool experiences on that big jaunt that we do in search of bears in those three days. Uh, next is the the elk summit and that's uh, June 18th through the 21st. And then the mule deer summit is the very following weekend, the 25th through the 28th. And one thing that's surprising to me, Brian, mm-hmm. about some of the people who have signed up for this, they haven't just signed up for one. I've got a couple people who have signed up for all three summits. <laughs> um, I've got quite a few people who have signed up for the mule there and the elk. So they're staying here for an entire week and then some. Very um, cool. And a couple That's of cool. those were people from last year who already attended one. So um, I think I think they had a good time. And I think that's... Oh, dude, if you've got people signing up two years in a row, that, that says a lot. That, yeah, for sure. We were so happy to see that, Hill and I. Um, you know, even after the survey we took after last year's summit, such good feedback. And I feel like we're doing way better this year at yeah. managing this entire process. So it's going to be much better. We'll, you know, better put together and a lot more pieces to it. So good I think stuff, we'll grow man. with it and make it better. Good stuff. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to let you go. Uh, folks, check out the Western Hunting Summit. Go follow Ryan at Stealthy Hunter, S T H E A L T H Y Hunter yep. on Instagram. Uh, and, uh, check out the podcast, hunt, harvest health that you and Hillary do your wife, mm-hmm. Dr. Yep. Hillary, uh, lots of good information there on healthy living and, uh, yep. s- and some hunting, a little uh, bit of hunting, a whole lot of health with my wife. My wife is the brains of, of this operation. Obviously I just hunt. So, yep. um, if you're interested in health, she's there for you. Yep. All right, man. Thanks for, thanks for uh, coming on the show today, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Stay gritty.